thank you for coming. Um, today we were engaged in the first meeting between the minister and the board in our first uh, quarter. And um, I was being briefed about development and uh, the, the policy issues, how they are being implemented, and also the uh, management issues were discussed, recapitalization of the uh, uh, NRZ was also discussed extensively. Um, I must say I'm happy at the moment in certain aspects where uh, the strategic plan is being uh, implemented and uh, that uh, there are uh, the governance issues are also uh, being taken care of. And also that uh, today we have constituted a full board uh, where we have uh, two ladies who have joined the, uh, the board. So the board is ready to go. The issue of, uh, first the issue of uh, NRZ's importance and role in the economy of the country was realized and it is upon that bedrock that uh, uh, the leadership, the board itself, is going to steer the uh, inner side to achieve the 2030 uh, goals and to achieve their vision. So um, we are aware of local uh, challenges and also the uh, importance of engaging in the region to expand the, 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 the railway service. Uh, and as it is also in, in the process of doing that. Uh, however, um, the issue of recapitalization came in country four. And um, uh, I have uh, put my reservations on the table that we now need to use local financial strategies and also look at other sectors, how they can benefit the NRZ by working together. The mines, mining sector, for instance. Investors there, they, they are looking forward to get their project from pit to pot. They, uh, they quite a number have the financial muscles to do that. So the, the issue that we need to look at how we can partner and how we can uh, 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 bring in some symbiosis uh, whereby we can work together. And the board has taken that on board that they will really they will look at that with the agents it deserves. Yes, we will be looking for a strategic partner uh, internationally, but that's a, another path that can go along. But we are looking at the short and medium uh, problems. This is the way to go. Look at the local investments, look at the other investors who are coming in and how we tie up with them. Uh, there is huge potential from the discussions. We have agreed and we have actually identified some places where, some sectors where the need for rail is <coughs> unquestionable. And we then uh, uh, looked as well at the issues of management. I've directed <coughs> to look at our management and rejuvenate it, streamline the structure, and where possible, bring in new blood so that we can take this NRZ to, to where it's supposed to be. Um, yes, there have been some work which you recognize that the uh, work has been going on but uh, we need to infuse new ideas and new blood into the institution. So I want to see that happening, and uh, the board is 
has assured me that uh, by October we should be talking of a different texture altogether. We want to start from management and the leadership of this organization to spruce it up before we can even talk about all this recapitalization. Somebody must be running with the project, with the funding, or whatever is procured. Somebody who is able to chart the way forward. So that's why we decided to look first at the management and make sure that it is correct and it's ready to go with the new environment, infuse new culture into the organization. So that's a key issue and uh, we're going to move very fast in that direction. So, um, well, I've got reports from other initiatives that were going, happening, that are going on now, the issues of the Russians uh, coming out with the weapons, the uh, Indonesians, and other investment opportunities that are there, uh, the locking by development, which will go with the chairman and uh, his team in Arari, unlock the value of assets that we have. We can't be crying when we have assets that can leverage us or that can release us from, you know, from, from, from bondage of uh, <coughs> poverty. So that's, those are issues that we, 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 we are looking at. And just to make sure that NLZ uh, should not be the same again uh, by end of this year. This is what we are, we are looking at. So it is a very important meeting today because we are looking at critical issues, as I said. The management, followed by the recapitalization of, of um, the institution. And uh, also continuing with the um, engagement of other sectors so that we don't operate in, in silos. We should be able to see what benefits we are derived from other sectors of the economy. And uh, that in itself is giving us impetus into the new era. So that's exactly what uh, we, we were discussing. And it is from here that we will shoot up a uh, uh, platform from which we will take off uh, a new lease of life for another Thank you. Thank you. Yes, uh, I'm late. Yes, um, the minister rightly touched on the on the Russian deal. Uh, the work ons were supposed to to come in January, so maybe if we could have a, an update on, on where they are now and if they are still coming. Yes, I know we have the COVID nineteen, but between January and March date when we had our when our lockdown began, I'm sure maybe something could happen between. That time. And my second question is on the on the NRZ commuter train. We are having people uh, street by saying that uh, NRZ wants to use this COVID-19 situation to completely do away with the passenger train. We have people having problems uh, areas such as Couch Park for the uh, the Zimbabwe train, and we also have people from areas such as Wangenya Madrobo who primarily rely on the passenger train having problems in community because the, the train is not there because of the lockdown. So I want to know if the uh, government will ensure a, a, a quick comeback of the passenger train or if it's not uh, coming back um, at all. And then my last question, my third question uh, for now is on the on the transmit tender. Since government, uh, government councils that uh, Transnet tender, what's the way forward on, on the capitalization? Okay, those are the questions at the moment. Yes, two more for the minister answer, two more journalists with questions. If not, let us give the minister the opportunity to answer the three questions from Andre Chuba. Okay, thank you. Uh, uh, the Russian deal is on the cards, and uh, it's, the processes uh, seem to take long. But uh, we had a visit from the Russians to come and uh, discuss with, with us at high level. 
uh, confirming that they are all interested, in, still interested in the deal. And uh, the issue is about raising funds uh, from our, ourselves as Kenyans. And it's 10 million. Yeah. So we're in the process of doing that. Soon after that, then the deal is done. But as you rightly recognized, uh, most of the action stopped because of COVID-19. So the deal is on. The community trade, that is not cancelled. It's going on. As soon as the <coughs> lockdown uh, allows, we start our, our media trade. We funds allowing, permitting, we want this to cascade into other places. So it's, it's, it's an issue that uh, we we, we cannot run away from those because that's our one, one of our core business. And then uh, the Transnet DITG deal, that uh, was closed, and as we are aware. And um, the NRZ is in the process of uh, formulating uh, terms of reference by which we will then uh, engage, number one, strategic partners, two, also the, um, the short, short to medium uh, program where we are looking at the local initiatives, uh, come up with a financial model which involves uh, partnering with other investors. Uh, in other sectors, as I said, in um, uh, mining sector, or agriculture, or, or any other. And um, that is a, a, a low hanging fruit. And these are the things that we are now seized with uh, at the moment. Uh, a report will be given in due course by the board, and um, we will then look at it and implement what's implementable as fast as we can. Uh, COVID-19 has given us some time to do some introspection and see what can be done locally and so what ventures we can do. And uh, <clears throat> this is what we are working. We are working to assist with that. So we'll get the report and from that report we now can start uh, working on the recapitalization program. So it's, uh, it's, it's, it's two ways, the local and the international. We, 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 we welcome international investors, just like we are welcoming the Russians, just like we are welcoming the Indonesians. So it's very much on cost. Um, but Honorable Minister, the, the person that most people are asking is that there has been a, a statement to say the trade that uh, LRZ is using is uh, now old, outdated, and is now becoming a, a danger to the operations of the, the institution itself. What would be government's response and what is government doing waiting with NRZ and other partners to deal with the aspect of the rail trap? That's the first question. Can we have the second one? Andre, we are big. Are you now not the dominion? It's okay. <laughs> I want okay. to, to ask maybe if uh, the Minister of Transport met together with NRZ said that I'm not certain if there is a railway network to to buy. But the problem that is there, Minister, is that uh, GMP, like you said, they are failing to deliver grain for the job shipping program because the, red, uh, the road network there is so poor such that transporters do not want to risk taking their old age trucks uh, to, to, to guy. So people are might risk going hand because there is no prop there's no good road to to deliver grain. So I want to know what you as the Minister of Transport is doing to, to ensure that something is done about the uh, pathetic state of that road 
and uh, people get their pay. And then I also have a question on the state of the uh, trans of transport um, network in, in Hawaii. Uh, I know that you may say maybe it's partially got to do with the Ministry of Local Government, but it's a, it's a transport uh, crisis, so I think you, I'm, I'm right if I'm asking you. Um, at the moment, we're only having a commuter-only buses in, uh, and uh, buses under the Fico scheme. However, there are so few such that people spend so many long hours queuing for the Zubco bus at a time when they're supposed to be social distance, practicing uh, social distance and uh, people are delaying getting to work because the Zubco's are so few but we have copies that are packed and uh, commuters are saying that it's not fair for government to want everyone to, to join, to be coerced to join the Zubco scheme. In Bulawa we have registered taxi associations uh, that are I think are registered and, 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 and so forth. So why are they not allowed to maybe uh, to operate and help the stranded commuter? Because if you could see, maybe if you, if you could uh, visit six hundred in there, you would see that uh, old ladies are finding their ways onto the uh, load boxes or pickup trucks because of the uh, say the air transport problems that we are, we are experiencing. So what is government doing to ensure that? While um, it's doing everything in light of uh, protecting people from the COVID-19, um, it's also ensuring that people are protected and are not crowding it. takes the next waiting for uh, the Zuko COVID that are not uh, coping with the high uh, numbers of demand. Thank you. I think we now have three questions. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, the track. Is, uh, is, is a major infrastructure for rail. And um, rolling stock is something else. Uh, as I was saying, first of all, we have to look at the major issue, which is management. We are looking at management to revamp and restructure the organization. It is key so that. Whatever, what we want to drive it is it's got the best drivers. Uh, after which then the issues of refurbishing or of, of, of improving the infrastructure, recapitalization, then are properly addressed. So what that's one of the things that the, the organization is the restructuring. And secondly, as I said, uh, the terms of reference uh, be worked out. I don't want to preempt what it is uh, to woo partners into the uh, uh, NRZ operations or building of building infrastructure. It's a key issue. And secondly, that we are looking at short to medium term solutions, which we think low hanging fruits. And how are we going to do that? We're going to partner with other uh, uh, sectors of the economy, like mines, where we have uh, pit to port rails that are being developed now with, by miners. And another set is will be the owner of the rails. But we need to partner with them. Partner in the sense of that these rails could be multi-purpose, could be for cargo as well as passenger trains. And also um, uh, partner with other uh, organizations in terms of finance, like the Russian deal we're talking about, like the Indonesians that we're talking about. This is our cards. Now, uh, I'll be briefed yeah, uh, uh, shortly or in a couple of weeks about the progress where we are uh, in terms of this, uh, the, these initiatives. And I'm hoping by end of year we should be talking about uh, a fruitful engagement with uh, the local players in some of the sectors. And that's what, what I'm favoring. That's what I would want to see because it can happen anytime. 
And there is potential, as I said in my opening remarks, there is potential for business, for NRZ in the country. We have lots of coal that needs to be delivered. We have cement that needs to be delivered. And chrome, which is now going by road, platinum that needs to be delivered. I mean, I'm talking of all these things. This is a potential issue that then we need to look at how we leverage on that. And there's a case where we look at the uh, financial reward from those operations shows that uh, NRZ can actually uh, stand on its feet without a lot of uh, hassles. So that's exactly what we are doing. That's what NRZ and the board, I tasked them to look at that. Management issues, the local initiative, as well as as we go forward, the issue of international partners. Yeah, but you see, there are issues that uh, we, 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 we are laden with. We are also laden with the uh, debt, the debt that needs to be also resolved for, for us to be attractive investors. So this is why a gamut of solutions is, is being worked out. And as I said, uh, the local solution is, is an issue that we want to put our hands on the debt. So that's exactly uh, where we are in that. And then uh, Nkai, yes, I was in Kai, uh, I think, uh, in Kai, the road you are talking about. Yeah, I, I visit roads. Uh, I'm always out in the roads. I know exactly what road we are talking about. And uh, money was allocated, and cabinet did directive for that road to be done. But, as you are aware, uh, there is this issue of COVID-19 and the president is on record saying is, we want to first save lives. So that, that means we need to prioritize certain roads we had, which have gone to a certain level of priming, for instance. So that we don't lose that prime. We need to finish those roads. So that's what we did now. We prioritized roads in every area where we had private. You know, that's what you can see, like, uh, uh, the, on the entire road, you find certain parts that were already given some private. And we're going to finish that part. Uh, in other roads, countrywide, that's what the program is all about. But as soon as uh, we now are out of this uh, COVID-19 problem, we then resume work depending on the inflows of funding. So this is more about funding and prioritizing the pass. Where does it go now? Which areas do we need to work? And we must also be very uh, happy that uh, at least projects that were ongoing, majority of them are still going on. But what I'm emphasizing is that role has been given priority areas of that road which had started to be complete and uh, we just wait for the funding to come and we, we move on. I know, for instance, uh, Copperfield Road in uh, Marshallland, West where I was, is also in a bad shape, even worse than Nkai, you know? Uh, but we are prioritizing it, it's on the priority list, as soon as we we are out of it. Remember, we have Vanga. Remember, we have Cyclone Idai, and now COVID. It's not only COVID. So these things uh, came and interrupted a lot of projects. So, but however, uh, as government, we are taking note of this, and we are going to do that lot. Uh, this year, to um, Well, the, the transport crisis uh, is. It's, it's an issue that is there, but it's being addressed in terms of uh, franchising uh, the Zupco grant. Uh, it's an ongoing process, uh, and this, these things are being reviewed on a weekly basis by the COVID-19 Task Force, National Task Force, where I sit and chair the Logistics uh, Committee. 
we'll be reviewing this as we go to make sure that uh, <coughs> uh, 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 because it goes, it's, it's, it's not only the transport, but it's, you know, it's the other factors that are being looked at in terms of the uh, rate of infection <coughs> and, 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 and all that, uh, minimizing, because uh, we have not really opened, fully opened, that must be understood. Uh, we're still in the lockdown and we are still uh, observing certain measures to make sure we control this. So I'm saying, yes, these things are being reviewed on a, on a weekly basis to see which, which areas we should be able to get. In the near future, we should be looking as well at domestic flights, you know, to, 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 to support the tourist, tourism, you know, and to, to support the business. So it's part of the reviews that will be coming as we go. Okay. Um, Honorable Minister Matiza. Historically, it's known that uh, the NRZ was a, a bulk goods mover in Zimbabwe. We then had uh, situations where some big wigs uh, with political connections went and bidded for them to be allowed to transport certain goods using trucks. And uh, eventually, that then took away most of the business that NRZ would ordinarily move. My question to you would be, is there, what is the message that you probably will be taking with central government to ensure that the movement of goods using trucks, which, is, which have had a detrimental effect on your roads, is uh, taken back to the NRZ? And secondly, there is a road which goes to Cares material and sound. Uh, the late Vice President Joshua Mbomo used to probably use that road. It stayed when he was still alive, is what it is up to this day. What is being done to deal or to address the challenges that people of material and sound are facing by using the road from here to from Malawi to Kesi? Thank you, Mr. Nguruleko. That's the last question from the analysts for now, Honorable Minister. Yeah, uh, thank you, Nguruleko. The NRZ and private, uh, the, the, these are businesses that are running on their, on their own. The issue that we are talking about here is that uh, the, is the uh, capacity at the present moment that uh, I have addressed. This is why the roads are being, some of the goods are being used by, by private uh, entrepreneurs is because we don't have enough of our rail. That's, that's the simple story. And uh, it would be ordinarily cheaper to use ours than to use diesel and trucks. Because we have bulk and we don't have all these small, small tunnels being taken out. So it's because this is where we are, and this is why we are look, we're really looking at first the, the restructuring of our organization, and then look at recapitalization, so that these things work hand in hand. So it's business, they have uh, their business unit, they have, you know, like they, now they have, they have the PR here, I mean, the GFR, it's all there. So this is a competitive world. But simply put, uh, this is why we want to deal with recapitalization. This is why I answered the question on the track, so that it's accessible. You know, it's, there, there are no accidents that happen. You know, so, so that is being uh, uh, looked at. And uh, you rest assured we are geared to this. Uh, after this meeting, everybody here is looking forward to see what, that, that we make a statement in terms of performance. Okay, the case the Blower Road. I think that's why that is that where the deputy minister of education comes from. What? I think he's the one who came to me and we discussed that issue for the case the road. And I think that's the one that is uh, uh, takes me to some tourist places, isn't it? Yeah, that's is that Matopos, yes. Yeah. That's the one. We've allocated money for it to, to start this year. So there's money for it. 
because it's one of the key areas. Uh, it was uh, presented by the MP uh, with the Deputy Minister of Higher, or oh, Primary, I think. Yeah, of Primary Education. So I'm, I'm aware of that. And we, 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 we put in the budget, if you look at the budget, it's, 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 it's incorporated. But the, there are these issues now that I'm talking about that need to be uh, given priority. Thank you. <laughs> Honorable Minister of Transport and Infrastructure Development, Architect Joel Begimatiza, uh, NRZ Board Chairman, Advocate Bart Martin Dina, the NRZ Board Members here present, the NRZ General Manager, Engineer Louis Mwada, NRZ PR Manager, Mr. Marawanyikase, Members from the press, the acting pro vice chancellor, uh, Mr. Kenan Mpala, Dean Fabat of, Com of uh, Humanities and Social Sciences, Dr. T. Dewey, and the uh, chairperson, Department of Business Management, Dr. Swang Le Manzini. Ladies and gentlemen, The NRZ and uh, LSU have had a landlord-tenant relationship that dates back to 2005, when LSU moved from the uh, NAST campus. The two entities have now decided to expand their relationship in order to include collaborations that strengthen each other's business competitiveness through innovation and entrepreneurship activities. The new focus on devolution in the country requires that regions embark on smart specialization in order to drive regional growth and competitiveness. This requires regions to identify their local strengths in terms of activities within existing sectors and industries and the companies that drive these activities. Innovation and entrepreneurship are considered the main drivers of regional growth and competitiveness. For the southern region of Zimbabwe, the rail transport sector, the timber and furniture industries, the beef and leather industries, the gold sector, the energy sector, and the tourism and hospitality sectors are the main drivers of our competitiveness in the region. Today we are gathered, ladies and gentlemen, together to sign an MOU whose envisaged activities are geared towards the actualization of an integrated system of passenger and goods transportation, which is designed to better meet the needs of passengers and industry and commerce park transport needs, in line with the nation's vision of becoming a middle-income country by 2030. Some of the activities that are envisaged under the MOU are, one, the development of an integrated system for the automation of business and administrative procedures for the rail, rail transport sector. Two, research in the field of health and safety of production processes within the rail transport sector. Three, the development of production standards, scheduling of passengers and goods trains, and the development of standard time norms. Four, the improving of the delivery of strategies to prevent rail accidents and driver fatigue. One of our press members was asking in relation to the rail accidents. Automated control systems for rail transport, development of pricing models in the rail transport sector, improving the skills matrix or ecosystem of the rail transport industry, and many more activities that uh, shall follow uh, once the MOU is in operation. The envisaged activities shall involve all of the faculties within the university, and we are hopeful that the outcome would be a more robust and competitive rail sector in Zimbabwe. The proposed activities are in tandem 
with the new Education 5.0 philosophy by the Minister of Higher and Tertiary Education, Innovation, Science and Technology Development, in which the production of goods and services is a key factor or cog in the higher and tertiary education ecosystem. We are hopeful, ladies and gentlemen, that with time, the National Railways of Zimbabwe shall establish a processing entity within the Investors Innovation and Industrial Park in order to grow Lupani into a major town and for import substitution of key components in the rail sector. With these few words, I thank you. Um, Honorable Minister, NRZ Board Chairman and uh, Board Members, Vice Chancellor uh, from uh, Lupani, State, Lupani State University, um, and the staff uh, from the University, uh, colleagues from NRZ Management, and uh, members of the press here present. Um, the NRZ is seeking to reposition its training center as part of its strategy to unlock full value of its assets. Either through the center has been focused on the internal training of, for NRZ's needs, and um, it has been running technical training for apprentices and courses for, for train drivers, etc. The training center is seeking to expand its curriculum to run courses for outsiders within the country and outside Zimbabwe. To achieve this, the NRZ is seeking to partner local universities to develop joint courses, and there has been a discussions with NAST, University of Zimbabwe, and Lupani State University. The NRZ has also approached the Galilee International Management Institute of Israel to help develop railway-related management courses. To date, the training center has been registered as a technical college for running engineering courses. And this is over and above the apprentices that it has been training. It is now a registered college like any polytech for running engineering courses. And um, we went in uh, last year the graduation of the first stream of uh, such students. These were outsiders, these were not NRZ uh, students. It is also registered. Um, it, is o it is also registered as a chartered institute of logistics and transport training school. It is now currently running certificate and diploma courses as part of this initiative. The envisaged partnerships with local universities go beyond development of courses, however, to cover such areas as cooperation in research and development, attachment of students to the NRZ, and cooperation in the development of innovation hubs for the universities. This will assist in the development of innovative solutions for the NRZ whilst helping the development of the students. The MOU that the NRZ is concluding with the Lupani State Universities covers the areas that the professor has already highlighted. But uh, broadly, we are looking at the development of our innovative bulk transport solutions and their commercialization. We are also looking at the industrial attachment for students, of course, and then the mentoring of uh, technopreneurs, because we believe uh, it is through this arrangement that students, uh, as they are released into industry, they are already technopreneurs. Collaboration in the research on bulk transport issues, which the professors already touched on, and development of railway-related supplier plants. We want to also go into a program of uh, supplier development through uh, partnership with the universities, which again the professor has talked about. Uh, Honorable Minister, this is not the first time that the NRZ is uh, partnering with the Lupani State University. The two institutions developed a management development program which was successfully run at the NRZ Training Center and benefited uh, railway management uh, who, went, who went through that, uh, that program. As the NRZ, we are pleased to be part of the Education 5.0 initiative, which places emphasis on the need for tertiary educational institutions to innovate and to help industrialize Zimbabwe. Thank you.